Welcome, Glenn. Oh, thank you, Marco. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes something th things have to do over, but anyway, uh, welcome, Glenn, uh, in your own crib, and I am in my own crib. Uh, who are you, and where are you coming from? Well, I'm here in uh, Orange County, California, and uh, for those who don't know, that's uh, near Disneyland. So near Disneyland. Uh, yeah, it's just about five to ten miles in between there not very far away season ticket for disneyland too expensive i bought a ticket for knott's berry farm which is the other theme park <laughs> okay 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 uh, cool uh well uh my first question is uh since what year you are into heavy metal and what brought you into heavy metal well i started playing music i would say 1976 and uh, that was when I just picked up my first guitar. And at that point in time, I wanted to be a, a Beatle. That was my favorite band. And uh, I met, ran into my friend in junior high school named Brian Corbin, who plays in a band called Heretic and Reverend. Yeah. And uh, we kind of discovered heavy metal together um, in seventh grade. And... Uh, you know, I would show him guitar chords and, uh, you know, we would, uh, basically start writing songs together as kids, you know, wanting to be heavy metal stars, you know? So our first favorite bands were like Led Zeppelin, Beatles, you know, Black Sabbath, uh, all, you know, all the mainstream bands back in the day. And, uh, the band that really caught my eye was Iron Maiden when the, uh, when I heard the Killers album. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was hooked to uh, metal ever since. And then Ozzy Osbourne's uh, Blizzard of Oz came out as well. So anything that came out in 1980, you know, was was like what really gravitated me towards the heavy metal thing. So you were were you also part of that uh, legendary show Iron Maiden played in the Long Beach Arena? Were you there? At which say that again? You cut out. Uh, uh... Were you were you also have been part at that uh, legendary show Iron Maiden played in that Long Beach Arena? Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Because Every year they came by, we went. My first time was actually Killers tour when they opened for UFO at Long Beach Arena, and then the Number of the Beast tour with uh, they opened for the Scorpions and Girl School was on that bill, and yeah, the Live Among the Dead. Yeah, that was uh, that was awesome. With the video. Yeah, we were there. I was there. Yeah, we're 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 somewhere in the audience. <laughs> somewhere, somewhere. Yeah, I, yeah. It's a legendary show. The whole world saw that show. That's really cool. If you've been there. Oh yeah, yeah. We were there. Um, it was a great show. Twisted Sister was the opening band, and uh, I'm a big Twisted Sister fan. So thumbs up to them. They they did a great show. Awesome, awesome. Okay, now go back to your uh, to your career. Please tell me about your musical activities and introduce your new band, Final Decree, and present the lineup to our viewers. So, Final Decree first. All right. Well, Final Decree is a band that was in the back of my mind for years. I've mm -hmm. always wanted to have my own band, you know, because mm -hmm. I was always the guitar player for Hyrax or Heretic or Deliverance or whatnot. But, uh, so I uh, got together with my Hyrax bandmate, Jorge. Icabilis. Yeah. And uh he's the drummer. And uh I've been playing with Jorge for years, and so he came on board. And then I got my longtime bass player friend and ally from the Steel Vengeance days, Cesar Saragati. Um, we've been wanting to play together again for many years, so this was the opportunity to get him in the band. And then out of the blue, my friend Sammy Dijon from the uh from the band uh Ruthless called me up and said, Hey, what are you doing? You know, um, I, we talked about doing this band before it, when I first started it, he was, he was working with me. And uh, so he's kind of back in the band. And now that we finally have some music out and our single is available. Um, thank you for releasing it for us. Thank um, you very much. And uh, you know, it was, it was a lot of work and, you know, of course COVID hit at the wrong time, right. When we're trying to get this going, but you know, yeah. um, we're still working on it and plan to record a full length too. Cool. Okay. Uh, well, uh, but 
Yeah, yeah, great, great answer. Thank you. It seems you guys were all involved in classic metal bands over the years. Please introduce to, uh, them to us. So, well, um, a little I bit started thought, but maybe some in depth. Yeah, well, for me, I've I've had a long career, and you know, was kind of the go-to guy when someone needed a guitar player. So. I would say my first metal adventure, you know, that with of any note was a band called Blind Decree. And okay. uh, that band culminated in the members of that band, you know, branched off into other groups. So the lineup in that band, we had Mike Gonzalez, who was the bass player um, on the lineup of that band. And he went on, you'd know him from Dark Angel. And then there was another guitar player named Brett Sarachek, who goes by the name of Brett Erickson who you'd know from Viking and Dark Angel as well, you know, and myself, you know, after I left that band, it was basically Deliverance, Vengeance Rising, and Steel Vengeance. And mm -hmm. then after that, Hyrax and Heretic and Primal and pretty much a lot of bands, <laughs> you know. And then Sammy was like, you know, the singer of Ruthless forever. You know, it's his baby, you know, and he still does Ruthless. But, uh, you know, he wants to, you know, be part of Final Decree. And right now that's kind of his main focus, you know. So Ruthless is, you know, they're kind of going to be doing like mainly festivals um, when they get it together. They're still kind of revamping the lineup. So uh, but right now his focus is on uh, Final Decree. And uh, last but not least, Cesar Serigati, who was uh, the bass player of Steel Vengeance, you know, um, that's pretty much been, he was in an earlier band called Atomica, which uh, never got released. They were kind of an Iron Maiden-ish type of uh, band. And then, uh, you know, he's been basically playing, you know, just a lot of covers and a lot of stuff like that, you know, over the years. And, and uh, you know, when we got together again, you know, he still has the chops and he's my buddy and my best friend for years. So it's like, well, you got to be in the band. So, Thanks. and that's that's pretty much the lineup. And, you know, we kind of tooled around with the second guitar player, but that just didn't really uh, happen. So we decided to keep it a four piece and uh, makes it easier. <laughs> you know, four guys, even split. And less, uh, less uh, you know, yeah, less people, less, in, less uh, influences, you know, just, just a few people who are in the same, same mindset. That's the best. Yeah, you know, basically my focus with this band is is we're not rediscovering anything new. We're doing what we grew up doing, playing 80 style heavy metal, you know, with elements of thrash. It's just what I know how to write, what mm -hmm. we know how to play. And, you know, so we're not going to be modern. We're going to be what we are. And mm -hmm. I think there's an audience that likes what we do. So, you know, that's that's pretty much it. Are your music you can very you can clearly hear you wrote the songs for Hyrex because the music uh at least for the albums you are a part of. Uh because Final Degree has uh you can hear the you can hear a little bit similar sound. Yeah, that's that's my sound, you know. I mean I did write, you know, the New Age of Terror mm -hmm. uh with the exception of two songs on that album. Um I wrote that, um Assassins of War. Mm -hmm. uh, Lance helped out with a little bit on that one. El Rosso de la Morte, Chaos and Brutality. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, you can hear that. that's the thing. Yeah, because I was, you know, the main songwriter of, of you know, working with Caton in that band. You know, Lance was developing. I mean, Lance basically was my roadie before he became the second guitar player, you know, when, when uh, we started with Hyrax, you know. So, um he 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 comes from more of a classical metal background, so you know he had to learn the, the ropes of playing thrash metal. So uh, I think I taught him well. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, well, uh, I released your uh, single, fi uh, Final Degree Seven Inch single, with my label uh, Headbangers Records. I did this together with my good friend Tama from Big Bad Wolf Records, also from the Netherlands. Are you happy with the result so far? Yeah, I mean, uh, you guys did an awesome job. You know, it's uh, it came out great. You know, um, it sounds good. I actually got to play it. I have a turntable, and it does sound really good. Um, it's not thin sounding, you know. And that's that's the thing too. You know that this record, 
you know, when we mixed it, it's for vinyl only. I mean, uh, there's no digital release on it and it's mixed for vinyl. So, um, you know, the, the video that you hear has the vinyl mix that we did a, a production video just to, to uh, you know, so people can hear the song. But, you know, right now until uh, the full length CD comes out, it's not going to be available. So you want it, you have to get the vinyl you know, or watch the video because, uh, you know, I just uh, I just feel old school. That's where I'm from. And I like records. So <laughs> that's it. <laughs> and that's that's thing, you know, uh when, uh, but if people uh, from overseas in the U United States, they go and order it from you or from Rob, uh, what Bob, from uh, there, are the, this the the guy uh, where uh, the Bob. Oh yeah, is, it's it's uh, it's available through No Life, uh, No Life till Metal Records, and that's you know with Rob, yeah, uh, Bob Rocks Rocks yeah, Records. Uh, they bought some copies. Um, Right now, the copies that we have, to be honest, we're we're a lot of them are are going to friends and people to just get to know the band. I have not sold one personally, but I've given a lot of them away. <laughs> you know, the rest of them, the rest of them, we plan to keep. You know, to sell live to come to our concert because you know I don't want to compete with the label and I don't want to keep compete with other you know record companies. I want them to sell their copies. You know, we'll sell ours live, and you know, if someone you know sends me an email and they need one really bad. Sure. You know, but, uh, you know, there, we only have a hundred copies. So, uh, I figured awesome. when we do play live, we're going to probably sell a lot of those out. So that's kind of the idea. Uh, you, we already talked, spoke about the fact that seven inches are really hard to get rid of and your experience yourself, but, uh, it's, it, which shows they will, uh, will, which shows people will buy something. It's something, for real collectors, real fans, but uh, the value is people don't can it cannot imagine that the value is so high for the seven inch, you know. And people, yeah, it's hard to it's it's hard. People want the full album, or but for real collectors, it's a must to have, especially because these songs are never nowhere to, to available. You know, it's only on this seven inch. So I would say if you live in the United States, go to some of your dealers. And if you are in the Netherlands, please come to Tom or to me. We have still enough copies available. And uh, we would love to spread the music around the globe. Yeah, I appreciate that. And you know what? I mean, it's there are collectors. I've I've gotten messages from people who've purchased it, you know, and, and people say, hey, they finally got theirs, you know, that came in the mail. Um, and, you know, honestly, I have not heard any bad reviews. I saw one kind of mediocre review from a from, I think, a Latin American uh, magazine. You yeah. know, they called us old and 80 sounding, which I took it as a compliment. It's like, you know what? It is. It's a compliment. Yeah, reviews are reviews. You know, you're gonna love it or you're you're not. You know, and that's fine. You know, but we make it available because you know this is what we love to do. You know, this is a passion project of mine. You yeah. know, we're not trying to uh, be pretentious and pretend. You know, this is you know this is what I write, how I write. You know, we make the music we like to make, and you know, people want to hear it, they want to buy it. We appreciate their support. So you know, get out and buy a copy. It'll be you know, it it helps us you know, spread the word and, and, and we'll have us a chance to make another record and, uh, you know, kind of grow this project because yeah, we are a new band we do come from, I guess, known bands and we've all released other records, but this is a brand new band. Final decree is, you know, it's new. So people are kind of like, who, who are they? Oh, those guys now listen to what we sound like, you know, and, uh, that'll open your eyes. I can only say, uh, I agree on that. And I will, I, I think people who wait too long, they go cry, they go cry later, or they have to buy millions of dollars of the millions, a lot of dollars later on, you know, because yeah. the single will be maybe in 10 years will be a huge collector and then people have to pay a fortune of it while they can buy it now for a decent price, but that's on them. Yeah, it is. It is, you know, <laughs> but I mean, you know, it's, it's, that's the whole point of why I wanted to do a vinyl, you know, because I know that that's kind of the, the market is, is collectors and, you know, yeah. 
like I said, it's a great quality vinyl. I mean, the, the, the vinyl itself is real thick and it sounds good. The cover is really, really yeah. nice. Um, you Look. know, the only thing that guys in the band complain is no picture on the cover, but I figured, well, this is old school. There weren't pictures on all every record in the beginning, you know. <laughs> I said, you know, be in the band long enough, you'll get your picture on the record. <laughs> well, it's also cool that there are two complete different styles of music on, on the single. Be Dark Before the Dawn is more like a trash song. And Miro Miro is a little bit more slower. But uh, yeah, it's yeah. it's 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 more melodic for sure, you know, because that's done, you know, really everything is kind of by design in a sense, because, you know, I come from a background of like Iron Maiden yeah. and thrash metal. So, you know, I like the combination of both uh, of being some some melodic yeah. and being fast and furious as well. You know, so um, like I said, we we there's no plan of. You know, we're going to be a thrash only band or we're going to be this only band. You know, we write the songs, we like it, and uh, we record it. And that's a, the benefit of it, doing it ourselves because there's no one to tell me, no, you can't have that song on this record because it's like, well, I want it on this record because it's my record. I'm recording it. So there, you know. So, yeah, your Mirror Mirror is going to be, you know, it's more melodic. Mm -hmm. And you know, Dark Before the Dawn is more of a thrashing. We kind of wanted to make a statement with the Dark Before the Dawn to let people know that, you know, I am the guy who did those songs in Hyrax. I have that, you know, that type of style and what I do. But you know, also it was in Steel Vengeance. If you ever heard the Steel Vengeance stuff, is more melodic. I can you take know? them. So I have them. So here. that's kind of the thing, you know. Yeah. Well, uh, are there also, so you already spoke a little bit about it, but I also plans to release a full album with Final Decree. Yeah, we're going to be starting production real soon. We're right now in the rehearsal, uh, basically our rehearsal time. So uh, we're just gearing up and uh, we hope to hit the studio in June. Mm -hmm. um, right now, we, we're like I said, it's just we're working it out with Sammy and just getting the vocal lines down and, and all the songs are written. Um, and basically like early June, we plan to hit the studio. Um, basically it's just, uh, yeah, it's just getting, you know, a few more rehearsals in and getting everyone comfortable playing because a lot of times, you know, because of COVID we didn't rehearse a lot. And so, you know, basically when we did the single, nobody played together at all other wow. than me and the drummer, you know, so I did the, we recorded the drums. I came in and did the guitar and then, went to the studio in, in, uh, with John Haddad and did the vocals and bass and he mixed it. So yeah, you know, we didn't, did not rehearse as a full band at all. And, uh, so right now we're at the point where everyone's getting healthy and, and safe. And, uh, so we plan to book, you know, right now, uh, with our vocalist, probably two more weeks, we'll start rehearsing with him, but, Right now, it's just me, Cesar, and, and Jorge getting all the music tight. And we're about eight or nine songs in, so we, we just got maybe two or three more. So yeah. we hope to have 10 or 11 songs on this uh, this full length. I'm curious. I'm curious. I'm curious. Uh, well, the next question. Tell me about the lyrical content of uh, content of Final Decree. What's, uh, what inspires you uh, by writing lyrics and so well, that's between me and Sam, depending on the songs. Uh, so what Sammy is really more, you know, the history, more traditional metal uh, anthems, you know, Dark Before the Dawn was basically, you know, a kind of brother versus brother, you know, and Mirror Mirror he wrote was more about, you know, self-reflecting, you know, the good and bad, both that are inside you, you know. Um, a lot of what I write, you know, we have a song called Warrior's Code is, is you know, kind of warning of the apocalypse of life, you know. Yeah. Um, a lot of, uh, you know, straighten up because, you know, if we uh, let things go crazy, it's, it's going to be the end, you know. So it's kind of uh, my uh, kind of look on life, you know. Uh, we, we can't keep going down the same old crazy road that we're going down, you know, so. Um, so that kind of reflects into my lyrics and, and it's about, you know, um, you know, finding that stuff that's inside you to keep you going. Like one song I got, I uh, wrote called ever, 
you know, it's about finding your faith in life and in, in humanity to, you know, keep going. So, you know, kind of inspirational, you know, kind of borderline, you know, positive, you know, I try to leave things with a positive uh, vibe, you know, so kind of heard a lot of death and destruction out there. So, you know, (laughs) eh, yeah, there's other bands that can do that. Well, there enough. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Uh, Are there some future plans that find out to create? How much impact does the COVID-19 situation on your have on your band so far? You already spoke a little bit about it, but yeah. Yeah. So, well, well, things are getting, you know, are starting to clear up more now that everyone's getting vaccines. The whole band got vaccinated. I'm actually, I was postponed. I was supposed to get mine today, but yeah. I had to do this interview. <laughs> so mine's going to be, so I'm getting my vaccine next week. Uh, and uh, yeah, so this is the plan basically is, you know, once we get the record out, we're going to just try to, you know, get fan interest in the band. Um from what I talked to Sammy, there's some interest with playing uh, some shows. Mm-hmm. Um, we hope that we will be able to travel in uh, 2022 and uh, maybe get to Europe to play some shows. And Sammy is looking into doing that and putting feelers out to maybe some festivals, um, some local shows here. Um, we want to play. We want to play live. And so anyone interested in booking us, contact us, you know. We know that, you know, to get to Europe, you know, we got to cover our plane ticket and that's fine. We will do that because I want to play that bad. You know, Um, we just ask that, you know, people cover the other parts of the expenses. You know, if you want us, we'd love to play your festival. Just help us out. We'll get there. But, you know, help us out. So, you know, that's that's our plan. Christian Ansting, Oliver Weinsheimer, the guys of Rock uh, uh, Headbangers Open Air, Little Devil. All the, the the two rock club in Germany, all these festival, the French guys I know, Belgium guys, Johnny, final decree, hit up us, hit up, hit 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 them up. We definitely come. We have jobs, so we can get our plane ticket. So that's no problem. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, well, a little bit of a personal question about music, not uh, not too personal, but about music. Please tell me your top five U.S. metal records. My top five U.S. metal records. Yeah. It's mm. little... Well, that's jarring my memory. Let's see. Uh, I, I I should tell you before to, to think about it, but... Yeah, really, because I would have gone with, you know, my... Just my name five was... records is also fine. Five records that inspired you for life. How about I give you five bands, you know? Okay. It's okay. Be... It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll give like, all right, here, here's one top metal records for me that inspired me. First one would be uh total control by sound barrier. If you know that oh, band, yeah, you're yeah, on. I know, but that's very unknown here. Yeah, I know, but <laughs> that's, that's my choice. The really? U.S. metal really? band is a record. Yeah, I, know, I know them, but they're really unknown. Yeah. yeah. Riot fire down under. Okay, you that's know, yeah. You know, uh I would say probably like we're looking at uh for me, you know, when the, the first Armored Saint record came out. Um and I like my only British bands, dude. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. British bands. Probably the, 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 the classic one like Deep Purple and uh Black Sabbath and those things. Yeah, well, actually, it's my two favorite British bands, metal bands, are Saxon and Iron Maiden. You know, okay, uh, good choice. Good strong choice. Arm of the Law, you know, Killers. Um, you know, I did like Anvil. I saw them when they came through. Okay. Uh, yeah, Forged and Fire, actually. I saw them with the original lineup, you know, back in the day. Yeah. Um, and uh, they were cool guys, good band, you know. And... Uh, was yeah, U.S. Show, metal band. Was that that show with Motley Crue where there are so many people packed on uh, the festival in 1983? Oh, the Utah, the US Festival. Yeah, yeah. 1983. That was that was uh, like uh, Motley Crue and Anvil and Loudness. I don't know which bands played, but it was a massive. Oh no, no, uh, a riot played there. I think. I don't. know. You know better, probably. 1983. Well, the US, yeah, that's the US Festival. No, that lineup was Quiet Riot. Yeah, and then Motley Crue, 
and Triumph. Triumph, yeah, that was it. Yeah. Right. And then Ozzy Osbourne, Judas Priest. Yeah. Scorpions one. and Van Halen. You were there? Yeah, everyone was oh, there. Oh, oh, <laughs> Three hundred thousand oh. people were there. Yeah, a lot of people were there. Yeah. Oh wow, amazing, awesome. Hotter than hell, man. That place was like out in the, the high desert, and and uh, they had to squirt everyone's water. It's crazy, crazy wow. time. You know. <laughs> yeah, you have been some uh, memorable concerts in your life. Great. Uh, well, uh, back to your. Uh, uh, daily life. How's your daily life? Uh, I see you are married. You have a daughter. I know. Uh, yeah. Uh, what are your hobbies? I know a little bit of the angels and uh, the kings and oh no, not the kings. Uh, the, the angel, the kings, was it? Yeah, the kings. Yeah. I like you know you know a lot of the a lot of the L.A. Orange County uh, teams. You know, uh, football team and the Rams. You know, angels yeah. are my baseball team. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the Kings are my favorite hockey team, but I have to like the Ducks because my wife likes the Ducks. So we go really? half and half uh, now. Uh, oh, <laughs> it's, it seems a very weird combination being a Ducks and a Kings fan in one. Well, it's this way: when I when I go to a Ducks game, as long as they're not playing the Kings, I'll support them. But when mm -hmm. they play together, I support the Kings. You know, okay. that's the thing is I'm in Orange County now. I used to well, I used to live in L.A. County, and me and Brian Corbin had season tickets for the Kings. Yeah, and so for like a number of seasons, we were there all the time. And then when I got married, I moved to Orange County, and you know it's too far to travel to uh, L.A. to yeah. get there on time. So uh, I go to Honda Center and see the Ducks. So it's like, right. all right, we'll support them. <laughs> it's okay. hockey. It's a lot of fun. You know, we do that. We do ice skating. You know, I skate. My wife uh, does figure skating, and my daughter's an artist. She loves right. doing okay. art. And, uh, yeah, so, you know, playing guitar and, you know, traveling, whatnot, you know, and sci-fi conventions, you know, we're totally nuts for Star Trek, Star Wars, anything, Firefly, anything that's sci-fi related. All the dirty things, like the Star Trek, Star Wars, uh, those, those, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we love that stuff, so, <laughs> you know. <laughs> have you seen, uh, I always ask, I'm, you are not, you have Netflix probably. Yeah. Have you already seen the series Cobra Kai? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We've watched, uh, oh, God, all the seasons so far. We love that. That's a great show. It's great. I huh? love all the metal, all the hard rock and metal stuff that they. they uh... <laughs> yeah. D Snyder's in it, and uh, it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. To... Uh, back to uh, the music. Uh, is there anything that you have uh, planned for the future, for uh, when the COVID is over, your record, your touring? Is already some lo local clubs who are interested to book you uh, as uh, it, for when it's a little bit stable that they say you can do uh, your first show here or something like this? Right. Yeah, we got some, uh, you know, some interest for some shows and we know some promoters locally. Mm -hmm. Um there are a couple of festivals, the online festivals that uh, yeah. that have asked me about doing, you know, their online stay at home type thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're thinking about doing that. What I think we're going to do um, after we get the record done is we're going to go into a, a studio and basically perform. This is an idea. So I think it might go over. We'll see. Uh, we're going to perform a live like concert and film it so that way you know people want to see what we are like live mm -hmm. you know we'll put it on youtube or or whatnot and just a live uh, studio performance you know no overdubs just the real thing you know okay cool and so that's kind of an idea because that's what those festivals are they want us to film us live and send it to them so they release it so we thought well you know we'll do that and uh give that a try you know why not well Cool. Uh, you uh, you also have uh, merchandise, shirts, patches. Uh, okay. You have them. Yes. Show them. I've got. If you can see, final decree T-shirts. Yeah. Cool. That's one. Um, yeah. I we made a deal with a company called Anchor Merchandising. It's, yeah. They're here in Southern California, and uh, they're handling our merchandise. Yeah. And it's a great deal because for us. You know, we don't really have to do the out-of-pocket expenses. So every order is per order. So if you want to just order one T-shirt, one hoodie, 
you can go on and order it, you know, and then they take care of it and send it out. And so we don't have to spend a lot of money out of pocket because it's basically, you know, they give us a little percentage of it. And I'm happy with that because the shipping and all that stuff, it's a lot of stuff to deal with, you know, so uh, they kind of take that out of our hands and handle it for us. So, uh, you know, Anthony Gober, thank you very much. He's the guy who runs that, you know, and uh, you know, yeah, so you got the, there's all sorts of things, not just the logo. They have the uh, the T-shirt of the album cover for the single. Yeah. Um, you can get a face mask. They even have tennis shoes if you want tennis shoes with our logo oh. on it. <laughs> oh, you have them yourself, I probably. I just got the T-shirt and I ordered a hoodie. So, uh, okay. yeah, and, uh, you know, and I have some patches that I had made up, you know, just to, uh, to uh, get them out to people who like the patches. And uh, you have to be in Germany for that. Yeah, well, there are people out here in L.A. like that, too. There's there's right. a couple of record shops that carry patches. You know, it's spilled over. You know, a lot of people wear the denim with with patches out here, believe it or not. So, cool. but, uh, you know, we have them available. So nice. So uh, that was uh, a little bit all all. Oh, I needed to ask. Uh, I I like to give you the chance to have your last words and your last thing you like to mention, and uh, oh, yeah, your last words for uh, our viewers for our channel. Sure, man. Well, you know, I, thanks for supporting metal and supporting indie labels like Headbangers and Big Bad Wolf. You guys, you know, you keep it going, and you give bands like us a chance to get out there. So I just want to say a big thank you from my heart, you know, really appreciate it. And we're just going to do our best, you know, to give you guys the best we can. And, uh, you know, from, from all of us in the band, you know, we really appreciate it and we hope to get out there and we will get out there as soon as, you know, all this clears up, we're going to Europe one way or another, whether it's a club show, a couple of club shows, we're going to get there and support this. So we appreciate it. I will look around if I, uh, can, uh, pick, uh, hit some promoters up to book you guys. I'm not sure. I, I, I made a lot of shows back then, but it's hard to get shows to manage yeah. these days. But I know some people will do and will do a proper job, so I will tell them about you guys. No worries. Well, I appreciate it. And then, you know, we might actually, our live show might, you know, we might throw in some surprises, you know, because we might play a few songs at, uh, you know, you might know from my past and from Sammy's past. So you never know. You might hear the New Age of Terror. You know, something uh, might be thrown in the the uh, set list that uh, you know the, well people would recognize. You know, so make wow. it special. You know. Well, thank you very much, Glenn. It was an honor to talk to you. It was a, a while ago we have spoke, but uh, it was glad to see you again on the screen. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> I hope uh, you're doing well and uh, the COVID is over very fast and that we can have our normal lives back again. Right. With right. music and sports and fun and people around you. Uh, when you come over, I will be there. In And if I you play in the US and I'm too, by accident there, I will be there too. But if you are in Europe, tell me and I try to manage some shows as well. And awesome. That, yeah, we do yeah. our best. Definitely, man. Hey, um, one more, one thing personally. Send me your address because you know, I, and I need to know your and Thomas' t-shirt size. So I want to send you a package and you know a thank you package. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. That's really high, highly appreciated. And uh, when you need new singles, I make. Uh, we will make a good uh, deal again. It's no problem. So and awesome. then I will and I will ha uh, put some extra stuff in it as well. So for as a as a gift. <laughs> well thank you thank you <laughs> okay all right well send me that address so i can get that out to you man i will i will thank you very much to, uh Tama. glenn <laughs> 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 thank you very much glenn rock on all right marco metal <laughs> there <laughs> thank you very much bye-bye talk to you later bye-bye